Hello, welcome to Osa's Lounge. I am Osa Sano, as you know. Thanks, guys. I have received so much feedback so far in my blogging experience. I'm so appreciative for your support. I want to take this moment to acknowledge you. I'm glad you're chilling in my lounge. You're relaxing. And I hope you also connect with me on this journey of self-discovery. We have covered two topics thus far relating to my epiphanies of rebirth. We spoke firstly about the price of freedom. And then we spoke about the next following item or topic, which was the voice. And today, before we go to today's topic, I would like to request that you like if you're enjoying the content, you subscribe, and you connect. So please do like, subscribe if you're enjoying the content that I'm providing to you because it takes time and effort to do this. And I am hoping that you're benefiting from this program. Now, today we're following on on The Voice and the next topic in my blog was and we're covering again today because it's very important. I think the blog, a great opportunity to reach those guys who love to read. And the video element, the vlog, is about reaching the people who like to be visual, who like to see and connect via videos. So the content might be a sim repetitive, but it's just meant for a different audience. And if you love to read and you love to also watch videos, Enjoy this experience as well. I'm hoping you're actually loving it just like I am. But today we are going to talk about the topic of simulation. So following up on the topic of the voice, um, I left you last week with speaking about whether or not I was in a simulation at the end when I realized that the voice in my head was an intrusive voice and it wasn't something that was mine. I wasn't the author of Miss Independent. So I left you with a question, was I living in a simulated world? Was I in a simulation? Was I in an animated world? Because this voice that I didn't know, which was an alien to me, had become my best friend and was guiding me and instructing me on what I must and must not do, which led me to fear, anxiety, worry, and all, and suffering and pain because I felt confused. I felt I couldn't ex enjoy the void. I couldn't enjoy the silence, the dark at night in the dark, quiet area. I couldn't enjoy quiet. I couldn't enjoy my lonesome self, but I was consumed every moment loud and quiet by a voice I didn't recognize, which was now my instructor. So that question remains, was I living in an animated world? And to follow on, on that topic, we are speaking about simulation today. Have you ever questioned the nature of your reality? If you watch the series Westworld, you will realize that Bernard Lowe asked that question multiple times. The actor with, it, with the name Bernard Lowe, he asked that question multiple times to Dolores Abernathy. And every single time, countless times, he asked that question, I think almost every episode, before she realized who she, that she was in an animated world, he asked her the question, have you ever questioned the, uh, the nature of your reality? And, Del and Dolores always said no, she hadn't. And watching that series about seven years ago, or starting with it, I realized that I, I felt unsettled by that question. And I thought maybe I should ponder on that question myself because I believe every episode or every series has a message, and that message struck me greatly. To speak about the featured image for this blog, I love to speak about it because I invested so much time and effort creating them. The, the, the featured image for this blog simulation was a robot sitting in an office with a laptop on his lap. Now, Dolores was a robot, as we all know from the series, if you ever watched the series Westworld. But the question uh, Bernard posed to her multiple times, countless times, stuck with me and struck a chord with me. And I felt I had to answer the question. And as much as I wanted to say, like, Dolores, no, 
I also needed, I, I, felt I felt unsettled by that answer. I began to think, should I question the nature of my reality? Was I in a simulation? Was I a host to the voice in my head? Was I a robot to the voice in my head? Because this instructive voice that I didn't know what it looked like, what its motive was, what direction it was leading me to, if it even had intellectual capacity, was occupying me completely and I was submerged in this animated world driven and instructed by my new boss, the voice. So like a robot, like Dolores, I had to pause. I had to rewind and I had to play. That's why we're here today with Osses Lang being a self-discovery journey for me. I had to pause like a robot at the irony of it. I had to rewind and I had to play back episodes since my breakout, since Chrysalis happened, since my transformative journey of getting thrown into the free world or finding my wings to fly into the free world when I finished university, I had to pause and question whether or not my reality was true or was it false, was it fake, was it, was it an animated world or was it my real world? So, thankfully, when I questioned these, the nature of my reality seven years ago, watching the series after I had to ponder and watch, I watched a lot of it and I, I was like, okay, I feel unsettled by this. Should I rewind and pause and, 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 and play back my life? Which when I did, I, re I recalled vivid scenes, vivid scenes, despite the swift passage of seven years. I was now in my late 20s, no more 22 or early 20s anymore. I was approaching 30. And also, by the way, I was no more Miss Independent. I was now Mrs. Independent because I was married. I just had just gotten married. It's a new leaf I turned again seven years later from when I started working in 2010. This was now the end of uh, uh, um, 2017. Um, I just got married that the year before, and I was a fully fledged adult. That's where, this is where my journey of self reflection was beginning to unfold. I was at the prime of my career, working as an investment banker. Fortune was on my side. I was doing very well in my professional career. I was fully engrossed, fully engrossed in a fiercely competitive struggle for recognition, for wealth, and for power. I was stuck in the rat race working 20 hour, 18 to 20 hour days as an investment banker in corporate finance, mergers and acquisitions, living the best, my best life in a cocoon, a new cocoon called an office space, a toxic environment where everyone is struggling, hustling for recognition, for wealth, for power. Remember I had my liberating keys already, but I've upgraded my keys at this point because I was making a lot more money. I was no more an article clerk working as an auditor, earning peanuts, trying to qualify as a chartered accountant, which took me seven years. This time I was four years post-qualification. I was an investment banker work, working in the, in the equivalent, working in the equivalent of Wall Street in South Africa, in our big apple of Africa. And South Africa, obviously, in Johannesburg. Right in Santon, I was working there. Work was a few minutes from home. It was amazing. I was stuck in this rat race, chasing my tail and about to lose it. But I had my carrots, which were dangling in front of me. And I felt I was rewarded with really nice things like a Mercedes Benz. If you see my other image in the, in the blog, I had, I was standing, I was a robot still standing in front of a Merc. And I felt, oh, this was a rewarding experience. The voice in my head was not so bad after all. I had a house in the porch suburb of Santon, Johannesburg. I had many overseas work stints and vacations. I had been to the U from not being anywhere but in Africa. I had been now to the US. I had been to I was going to go to London. I had traveled to different parts of the world for work. I had been all around Africa flying business class for meetings in and out of like living my best life technically. Or that's what people would think. The voice in my head obviously deserved a round of applause, right? 
because the voice in my head had gotten me here. But sitting here, above the upper middle class in South Africa, the privileged 10%, should I be, should I feel like I've arrived? The voice, I should hug, hug on, hold on to it dearly because it was doing a very great job of, of keeping me in this struggle, this competitive struggle, the competitive struggle, climbing the corporate ladder. I had done so well in the last seven years doing that. But this voice, this intrusive voice still remained. And the author of it had to be questioned because I began to realize the struggle working 18 to 20 hours a day with people who barely like you. It wasn't a family, it wasn't home. It was everything that contradicted my core essence, my being. So despite being its host, I was a host to this intrusive voice, the voice in my head, which had done an excellent job in shaping my identity or had it. What is my identity? My identity, the voice had shaped it. I thought, my younger self thought, but watching this show called Westworld, I had to question my identity. My replay, back to my replay, it uncovered the piercing truth. And this piercing truth was that I was just a product of pre-programmed assumptions, pre-programmed perceptions, pre-programmed ideas and pre-programmed notions. I was just a product. I wasn't human. I was just a robot, a host, a voice in my head, which I was not the author to. I was just a product of a pre-programmed system, which created this reality that, that I was telling this story to myself. We all tell stories to ourselves. Do you realize that? We are all constructions of stories, our masks, our personas that we put up to interact with people, different people. We have different masks for different situations. We tell ourselves different stories that make us feel we are, that, 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 that caresses our ego, makes us feel accepted, makes us feel like we belong. That feeling of belonging we seek desperately as human beings because we, we like we, we are not solo, hum we, we are meant to be with people, to interact social beings. But the reality it created for me was a story I was experiencing, which was very different from what I felt. I felt unsettled, remember, by that question. Or the answer to that question, no, unsettled me. And for that to unsettle me, I had to pause and delve deep into what who the author of this voice was and whether or not I was just a host, just like Dolores. I woke up each day to an imaginary voice. My blueprint was a replica of a system that was designed to fit in a model that has been refined over time, completely refined over time. The first, the first our hunter-gatherers who got here our ancestors, they have over time refined the system and I was just living a replica of it in the current form, the form in which I was living in 2017, the world as it was. After all the selection, the, the process of natural selection, which di was dictated by norms, culture and religion. So I was just living in a pre-programmed system which, which our forefathers and generations of hundreds and thousands of generations had created for me. And I was just reliving it because we're supposed to just relive it apparently. Or are we? Can we question it? Can we question the norms, the social norms that we go by? Can we question the cultures and religion which has been forced down our throat unknown to us? We're born into it. We had, no other, we had nothing else to go by. And this system, dictated by social norms, cultures, and religion, who had tyrannized the process of natural selection, the guys who survived had to be in this system to survive. Do you believe that? Do you believe that life can be different from the social norms, the cultures, and religions that have been put in place by our, by the, our ancestors, 
and by this, the government system of this world that has been refined over time into a beautiful model that we just breathe and live in unconscious to ourselves that there could be more to this life. We could be living as a true being, how God originally intended before man fell from grace to grass. But answering that question, which unsettled me, I came to realize this piercing truth from my replay of my life, the last seven years since I got my freedom and left home into the corporate world, that my, my reality lacked originality. My reality lacked authenticity. My reality, my reality lacked my own footprint. It wasn't mine. It was just carved out for me. And I was just like Dolores, just that I wasn't a, a robot per se. I'm a human being, but humanity had dictated what my cultural norms, my religious norms, my societal norms should be. My memories were intact, thankfully, and real because yes, I'm human, as I've said. I'm not a robot. I'm not made of wires and cords and electricity. I'm made by God, my omnipotent creating one, the Elohim, the Jehovah, Yahweh, the first and the last, Alpha and Omega. I was made in his image. So my memories were real and intact, thankfully, unlike Dolores's. However, it was totally flawed. The unsettling feeling that I, had, I was just a host was true in a sense because this voice had taken complete control over my life and dictated where I should be and that place I was in the top 10% in the mid, upper middle class in South Africa earning my millions as an investment banker although I was unhappy, I was sad, I was in a toxic environment I was living in the, my worst nightmare was I had to put on a facade. I had to put on a mask that told me, oh, yes, it's not so bad after all. You could, be, have, you could have been poor, but you are in this place. You are, you, you've done so far. I should applaud the voice. Do you feel the same way or is it just me? That this unsettling feeling, this voice in my head that had intruded my life and dictated everything I should do and made me become someone who was a people pleaser and took the path of least resistance against the truth, my soul and my being. I shouldn't be working 16 to 20 hours a day, going home to just sleep, sometimes not even sleep, just going home to brush my teeth and shower and go back to work. I shouldn't be living in that world. Even if everyone, people in finance crave that top position in corporate finance, it was not normal. Because when something is abnormal, it is completely abnormal. Finally, I had encountered something that conflicted with my reality or that reality that I was living in, where I had no time but just for the corporate dogs, for corporate, slaving away, basically chasing my tail like a rat. An ant was even better than me because an ant is wise. I wanted to be a bee, but I didn't know how because I was consumed by this voice which dictated my life, which was in the driving seat, not myself, as I wished for in my breakout in 2010. Seven years later, I was questioning, thankfully. Thanks to Westworld, I began to question and dig deeper into what life should be truly about and if i was truly living the being the purpose god has put me on this planet for i could no more be blind to it i could no more ignore it it was a fake narrative completely fake narrative that i had that the voice had constructed had designed over decades of and and, and millenniums from the beginning of time, natural selection had carved out a pre-programmed system, pre system. My life was not filled with signs, completely filled with signs, all hinting that things were not what they were meant to be or what I believed them to be. 
I had to question these assumptions. I had to question these perceptions, these ideas, these notions. They had to be questioned. My reality, I had to find the key to unlock my free will. What is free will to you? I believe most of us don't really have our free will, even if we are in a world of freedom, where freedom is our right, our human right, where we think as we like, we speak as, or we supposedly think as we like, we speak as we like, we act as we like, we vote as we like. Yes, no disregard to our freedom fighters who have done so much to liberate us, but do we have, have we unlocked our free will is the question today. A comment came through saying, finding your true self starts with the question, what is true about yourself? Can you relate to that comment? What is true about yourself? If you, when you start to discover your true self, you have to start with the question in finding your true self, what is true? You have to dissect. You have to tear apart. You have to peel off layers of pre-programmed systems. It's like a maze. It's a puzzle you have to solve to, to actually get past the layers and layers of years and decades and centuries of natural selection and what it had created, this system that our norms, we, don't, we are born into, that contradict what being should be about and what free will is truly about. Henry Laborit, he was a French surgeon and philosopher, he said, a being's only reason for being is being. B-E-I-N-G. The only reason for being is being. Can you relate to that? To be. You know the verb to be? To just be. We are just meant to be. We're not meant to be chasing paper. We're not meant to be the external things that the world, the consumerism that we've been sucked into, this religious, religious philosophies and all of these things that derail us from just really understanding who, what being is about. Breathing, mindfulness, meditation, breath work. When we do that, we start to be, to be the real being. Do you, do you ever imagine your creator, God, with a big G? Do you think the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent one is stuck in some job working as a dog for hours where your boss tramples? Do you feel that's what God intended when he created us in his own image? I beg to differ. I don't believe that. We we're meant to be just like in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve, the first man and woman on earth, as the Bible tells us, was living, communing with God, eating whatever they wanted, do, living, just enjoying being alive, not just existing. A being's only reason for being is being. Think about that for a moment. So everything else is an illusion. If you're not being, if you don't feel in your true self, when you think and pause and, and ask yourself the question, who am I? If every, everything else except being is an illusion, a construction of our brains, of our society to achieve survival, they say survival of the fittest, which means you have to subscribe to the norms, the societal norms, the governmental norms, the religious norms, to survive, to be the fit one. Just imagine being in a zoo. That's what we've, we were supposed to be bigger than the animals. We're supposed to be a predator. We're supposed to eat what we like. We're supposed to, 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 to do what we like. Freedom, true freedom. In the image of God, God controls everything. We're supposed to be his image. But we are chasing survival like a, like a rat, which is about to lose his tail, climbing some corporate ladder, chasing recognition, chasing power, chasing money. Today, I'm still processing 
I'm still trying to find my true self. I am not different from you. That's why we are on this journey of self-reflection, of self-discovery, of questioning. I'm still in the process of finding my true self, the essence of my being, the essence, the true essence of my being. Figuring out the right channel out of this puzzling network of parts created for us over decades and centuries, since the beginning of time. Even time itself was man-made. The 24 hours we have in a day was man-made. Yes, the people of the, the, the first man and woman on earth, the sun and the moon, things created by God dictated when they should go to bed, when they should be awake, when they should go hunt and gather stuff to eat. But we've come a long way to civilization, but civilization, the current form of civilization, is full of lots of, of capitalism, of consumerism, of us gathering and gathering and gathering and working and working and working till we die, till we, till we suffer in pain and suffering from diseases that were not meant to be part of our lives. We were supposed to be healthy and live a clear, in a community of love, not toxicity, like we have in corporate, like we have in our jobs, where we are scared we are always living in fear, trapped in the maze of our own thoughts, puzzle, stuck in a maze, puzzle of networks of paths, just like the robot is full of lots of, lots of parts and, 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 and wires and cords. We are trapped in that too as human beings. Discovering your true self is an endless journey. You have to unpiece algorithms embedded in your biochemical pathways. Can you, can you think about that for a moment? The journey is endless. Every single day you have to question your true reality. Who what being should be about? Are you, are you actually enjoying? Are you, are, are, you, are you living in joy, in peace, in tranquility? The endless, it's an endless journey of piecing, on, on piecing rather, algorithms embedded in our biochemical pathways which cause emotions and reactions that lead to fear, worry, and anxiety. The end product of this, if you don't unpiece and discover your true self, the end product is continuous, the end product is continuous pain and continuous suffering. And, and I don't think God intended for us to suffer. Yes, we fell from grace to grass. That's why we are suffering. We have to work so hard. We have to earn a living. And the world just gets more and more twisted every single day that passes. We have to work the harder. We have to capitalism. Yes, it's the best form of our current form of civilization and getting by in life. But the level of consumerism, of acquiring, very, acquiring, 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 we never stop. We never have time to rest. We never have time to even pause and reflect, to be mindful to be aware of an awareness of ourselves. We have no time to even pause. The voice in our head has taken over completely. We are always calculating, calculating the next step. We, we, we are living in our past. We are stuck in our own nightmare, our, a frightful one at, at best. The end product is pain and suffering. So today, if I've left you with anything today, I hope you will take time to question the true nature of your reality. Question whether you are living your best, what God intended, what your creator intended, if you believe in a creator. And even if you don't believe, you're an atheist, you don't believe in that. Are you happy? Are you peaceful? Do you think running, rush, rushing here and there, living in a very rushed life is meant to be what life should be about? People don't live, they just die. That is very true. Albert Einstein, our famous physicist, he said, reality is merely an illusion, albeit a persistent one. And he also said one more thing I'll leave you with. A person starts to live when he or she can live outside of himself. Not in the clutter. 
not in the hustle and bustle, but outside of himself, which for me means not being in your head, stepping outside of your head, the voice, reflecting, pausing, questioning, live outside of yourself, of your head. You only start to live when you do that. So today, that's, that's it from me, simulation. I hope you enjoyed it. Do like, subscribe if you're enjoying the content. And I leave you once again with peace, lots of peace, no pain or suffering. Try to get rid of it. I leave you with love, lots of love, 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 love. Osa is about that. It's right in the middle of Osa. And lastly, I leave you with a huge light bulb. Or firstly, with Osa. The huge light bulb. I leave you with it. In that order, light, love, and peace. Till next time, bye-bye.